Kids! It's time for chemistry. Aww. Not so excited, huh? Well, did you know that this is chemistry? Dude! No, that's mine! Have you ever eaten candy? Ever wondered how it was made? How about caramel? You mean caramel. Ever eaten a caramel? Ever wondered how caramel is made? You have? Great. You're in for a treat. We all love that tasty, tasty caramel. It's caramel. So today we give you the chemistry of the creation of caramel. Caramel! Uh, yeah. First, put a lightly oiled piece of parchment paper inside a lightly oiled loaf pan. This will help the caramel to come out easier when you are done. You will also need a small saucepan, a half cup of aqueous lactose, a half cup of triglycerides, a quarter cup of light corn syrup, one cup of granulated white sucrose, dihydrogen oxide, a stove, and a candy thermometer. First, cut the butter into small pieces and place them in a bowl along with the heavy whipping cream. Now, place the bowl in the microwave until the butter is melted. Next, in a small saucepan, measure out three tablespoons of water. Add the light corn syrup and- Syrup, it's syrup. Add the sugar. Turn the burner on medium heat and stir the sucrose mixture until it reaches a boil. When it reaches a boil, place a lid on the pot for one minute to avoid crystallization. After one minute has passed, remove the lid and attach the candy thermometer to the side of the pan. Now, cook the mixture for five to 10 minutes or until the sucrose reaches a temperature of 320 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius. What happens here is when the sucrose, commonly known as sugar, reaches a temperature of 180 degrees Celsius, it decomposes into two components, fructose and glucose, commonly known as fructose and glucose. Now the process is well underway and do you smell that? This is the fructose and the glucose breaking down into smaller, more volatile compounds. Your brain can very easily detect that there are new molecules present. These molecules put off different aromas. Some smell nutty, others buttery, some toasty and some fruity. Keep on stirring the sucrose. My goodness, would you look at that? It's beginning to turn brown. Now, a new reaction takes place. The fructose and the glucose oligomerize. In the oligomerization reactions, the molecules turn brown. First, the individual sugars come together in pairs to form new molecules. In the case of fructose, it is called difructose dihydride. At this point, you may notice that it's beginning to get sticky. Why is that? The difructose dihydride molecules can further react on three different pathways. On the first, the molecules lose 12 molecules of water from its structure to form a compound called caramelan. Caramelan aggregates to form small brown particles that are 460 nanometers in size. A second type of molecule that the difructose dihydride can form is called caramelin. Caramelin aggregates to form small brown particles that are 950 nanometers in size. Finally, difructose dihydride can form caramelin from the combination of two difructose dihydride and the elimination of 27 water molecules. Caramelin forms aggregates that are 4,330 nanometers in size and darker in color. These three different molecules have similar structures as sucrose. Some of these molecules don't have quite enough atoms to meet all the bonding requirements. They are not attached to anything. They are called free radicals and are part of what make caramel sticky. The moment the sugar reaches 320 degrees Fahrenheit, carefully pour about a sixth of the triglycerides mixture into the aqueous glycrose. 
That's triglycerides and aqueous galactose. Then stir it in with the candy thermometer. Do this carefully as the sugar will release energy violently in the form of bubbles. Repeat this with the remaining cream and butter by adding a sixth of it at a time. The temperature will drop as you add the butter mixture. Continue cooking for another five to 10 minutes or until the caramel reaches 240 degrees Fahrenheit. When the caramel reaches the desired temperature, pour it onto the parchment paper inside the loaf pan. Now the hard part, waiting. The caramel must cool for three and a half hours before removing it from the loaf pan and cutting it into small pieces. So there you have it. That's how caramel is created. Who knew there was so much chemistry involved in the creation of a simple candy we all enjoy? Okay, kids, that's it for chemistry class. Kids! That's all the time we have for today. So go home and read chapter three. Oh boy, oh boy, isn't chemistry so much fun? Yeah. I know, right? Did you ever know why caramel is so sticky? Car